Hello everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Weary Weekly History and Entertainment News. Very slowly, businesses, stores, and arts and entertainment venues in Berkshire County are beginning to open up, although it will be quite some time before a return to normalcy is possible. On this episode, I'll be discussing what is and isn't open, as well as offering interesting history of two of Berkshire County's most iconic venues. First, it's time for this week's trivia question, which will be answered at the end of the show. This week's question doesn't focus on movies or books, but rather art. The question is, which famous Norman Rockwell painting was part of a bizarre scandal in the 2000s? Now, for this week's local entertainment news headlines. This week's headlines will start a little differently. I know I usually discuss the newest movie releases last, but the closer of movie theaters has wiped out this week for new major releases. Instead, make sure to visit streaming services and on demand for any older movies, as well as movies that I've mentioned in the past, such as Trolls World Tour, The High Note, and The King of Staten Island. Governor Charlie Baker's Phase 2 to reopen the state began on June 8th. This is step one of a two-step phase that will slowly allow companies to start their businesses back up again. The following businesses are allowed to be open with contingencies. Retail with occupational limits, child care facilities and day camps with detailed guidance, outdoor table services of restaurants, hotels and other lodging with occupation limits, warehouses and distribution centers, personal services such as home cleaning, photography, window washing, and career coaching, post-secondary higher educational, vocational, and occupational schools for the purposes of completing graduation requirements, youth and adult amateur sports, outdoor recreational facilities, professional sports practices, driving and flight schools, outdoor historical spaces, and funeral homes with occupational limits. Businesses such as indoor table services at restaurants are part of step two of phase two and will be re-eligible to open at a later date. Visit mass.gov for more information on the reopening process. It is important to note that just because the businesses in phase two can be open doesn't mean that they are open. Please make sure to call businesses or check their website for their specific rules and regulations for reopening. On June 11th, citizens of Lenox unanimously passed a public vote revising a local bylaw so downtown restaurants could allow alcoholic beverages to be served in outdoor dining restaurants. 183 people turned out to vote in their cars by honking their horns and waving their voting cards, which is way number than the required number of 27. In a phone conversation I had with Carrie L. Sullivan, Lennox's town clerk, the old bylaw stated, quote, No person shall consume any beer, wine, malt, or alcoholic beverages, nor have in his possession any open containers thereof upon any public way, sidewalk, or town-owned land. However, the revised bylaw added, quote, By majority vote of the Board of Selectmen, the prohibition described in the foregoing sentence may be suspended in one or more specific locations from time to time for a period not to exceed six months, end quote. Additionally, according to the Berkshire Eagle, the town will provide 20 picnic tables for the library's Roach Reading Park and Lilac Park across Main Street to accommodate even more diners. While the Pittsfield Antheneum building remains closed, they are adjusting to these very difficult times. In an email I had with Alex Rakowski, director of the Antheneum, library staff has been following state and local guidelines. 
They are limiting the number of staff working at the library who have all been trained in hygiene protocols. The library has embraced curbside pickup. Patrons can rent books, movies, music, and audiobooks. To do so, either place a hold by visiting the Anthonyum's website or by calling the reference department at 413-499-9480, extension 201. There are three rules the library is asking patrons to follow. Requests are limited to five items per pickup, only one pickup per day, and no more than three pickups per week. Those who do not have a library card can fill an extension through their website. According to Alex Rakowski, there are approximately 161,000 items in the collection. Additionally, Pittsfield is offering the Library from Home. Here, patrons can download books for their smartphones, read archived magazines and newspapers, and listen to a wide variety of audiobooks. The CW Mars Overdrive service also allows patrons to watch over 1,200 films. These range from the original Halloween to the King's Speech. Visit PittsfieldLibrary.org for more information. At the same time, there is going to be a phase reopening at some time. This allows for a limited number of patrons. Those going to the Children's Library must enter through the Bartlett Avenue entrance and adult patrons from the Wendell Avenue entrance. The Anthenaeum is also closely following COVID's numbers in order to start holding the popular Friends of the Anthenaeum book sales. It's now time for this week's history portion of WWATN. We're going to be following our previous story with history about the Berkshire Anthenaeum. In 1861, Pittsfield native Thomas Allen made a $50,000 donation to his hometown for the construction of a library. Businessmen Thomas Plunkett and Calvin Martin helped secure land before construction began in 1871 and then it opened in 1876 at Bank Row. The reason it's called an anthonym which is a Latin word for a place of learning and not called a library, is because many libraries were called Anthenaeums during the 19th century. It did not move into its current location on One Wendell Ave until 1975. One of the high points to the Anthenaeum is its vast research opportunities. For instance, patrons can view any Berkshire Eagle article advertisement and story since the Eagles inception in 1789. It also has one of the largest research collections available for the life and work of author Herman Melville, best known for Moby Dick. The Anthonyum's relationship to Melville helped it become designated as a literary landmark, which establishes a city or town in America with a famous author. The Anthenaeum is the first literary landmark in Berkshire County. Our second history stop this week is the Norman Rockwell Museum in Stockbridge. The museum is currently closed due to social distancing regulations, but all of the exhibits are on its website at www.nrm.org. Norman Rockwell is one of the most famous American painters of all time. He is best known for his paintings of everyday American life. These include the Four Freedoms series, his interpretation of Rosie the Riveter, and many other paintings. The Norman Rockwell Museum was founded in Stockbridge in 1969. Rockwell lived in the Northeast all his life, but moved to Stockbridge where he lived until his passing in 1978. The museum was originally located at the Older Corner House on Stockbridge's Main Street until 1993, when it moved to its current location, a 36-acre site on Glendale Ave. The Norman Rockwell Museum contains almost 1,000 of his original paintings and drawings. Additionally, 
It houses the largest archives for Rockwell. These archives include photographs, letters, personal calendars, fan mail, and business documents related to Norman Rockwell. One of the museum's biggest claims to fame is the collection of Norman Rockwell's entire Saturday Evening Post covers. Norman Rockwell painted 323 covers for the magazine, and you can view all of the covers at the museum or online at its website. The Norman Rockwell Museum also supplies the answer to this week's trivia question. As a reminder, this week's question was, which famous Norman Rockwell painting was part of a bizarre scandal in the 2000s? The answer is, Breaking Home Ties. This painting is one of Norman Rockwell's most famous, known for its betrayal of family ties. It was on the cover of the Saturday Evening Post in 1954 and was voted the second most popular Rockwell cover by the magazine. In 1960, cartoonist Don Tracy purchased the painting for $900. This was possible because the two were neighbors in Arlington, Vermont. The painting soon became one of Tracy's most popular possessions. Shortly after he purchased it, he was offered $35,000 for the painting, but he turned it down. Even Rockwell said, quote, You must be crazy not to sell it, but I adore your loyalty. End quote. Here is where the story takes a turn. In 1973, Trotsy and his wife divorced, and their collection of paintings were split up. Some time before the paintings were officially split up, it was later found out that Trotsy had made a forgery of breaking home ties as well as other paintings. Fast forward to 2002 and Trotsy's unknown forgery version of Breaking Home Ties was put on display at the Norman Rockwell Museum, its first public showing in 25 years. Art experts were concerned about some differences between Trotsy's painting and the one originally shown at the Saturday Evening Post. After Trotsy died in 2005, his sons Dave and Don Jr were looking through their father's estate, and then discovered a replica for a different painting. Upon further search of their father's home through photographs that he kept, the sons discovered that Trotsy possessed two breaking home ties. A professional examination done by the Williamstown Art Conservation Center confirmed that the one in the Norman Rockwell Museum was in fact a replica. On March 16, 2006, Dave and Don Jr. located the original painting. It had been stored and hidden in Don Tratze's studio in between a gap in a paneled wall of a bookcase. Inside that gap were several original paintings that Tratze bought, in addition to the original Breaking Home ties. The Norman Rockwell Museum placed the original painting alongside the replica on display in their museum for a few months before Sotheby's Auction House sold the painting on November 29, 2006 for $15.4 million to an unknown bidder. That ends Weary Weekly History and Entertainment News. Make sure to like, follow, and subscribe to my YouTube page at RT Weary. Also, new episodes will be airing on PCTV on Spectrum Berkshire County, Channel 1301. Visit www.pittsfieldtv.org for the full schedule. I am also happy to announce that new episodes will now also be airing on CTSB channel 1301 as well. Visit ctsbtv.org for their full schedule. Thank you.